In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own multiple choice question that uses pictures instead of words. Okay, let's get started here. So I've uh, decided to take this on as a bit of a challenge here. I thought there'd be uh, certainly an opportunity at times um, for people to create uh, multiple choice questions that rather use, uh, instead of using a bunch of words, sentences or, or selections of words, uh, where you might want to use pictures instead. So I figured out, well, there's a, a couple of ways that you could do this, but the way that I've done it here seems to work rather well for my situation. And I thought I'd share it with you guys here. So here's, uh, this is a standard content slide. There's nothing special about this here. I'm not using a quiz question slide or anything like that. Uh, this is a responsive design, but the same thing could work for uh, a standard or blank project as well. What I've done is um, I've created uh, four different images that represent the answers to the question here. Um, in this case here, we have political leaders as well as the Queen of England. Kind of a trick question in this case, who is the present head of state of Canada? Um, uh, for the time being anyway, the answer is actually the Queen of England is the head of state of Canada. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is the leader of the country and the leader of his political party. Uh, Tom Mulcair is the leader of the New Democratic Party and Elizabeth May is the leader of the Green Party here in Canada. Um, so it's kind of a trick question, but not really. Um, at first glance, you might think these are simply images that I've placed on screen. They're actually square or rectangular smart shapes where instead of, um, you know, simply having a color behind them, what I've done is if, if you take a look at the properties inspector, you can see that I'm using rather than a solid fill or a gradient fill, I'm actually using an image. And you can see here that I've selected trudeau.jpg, which is a, an image that I prepared earlier. And of course, I've set it up to stretch. And of course, in this case, the image is uh, 150 pixels by 150 pixels and therefore my shape is the same dimensions as well. I've added an outline to it so that I can differentiate between whether the objects are selected or not. So I just simply have a standard stroke color of gray with a width of about 10 pixels. And if I show you the, uh, the different multi-states for that particular image, you can see here that I've created another version of it where the selected image is everything is the same except the stroke color becomes red, which will be a visual cue to the user that they've clicked on one of these objects. And that's pretty much it. So now essentially I've created a button that is a picture and it's clickable and has different multi-state objects. And this works quite well. And I've got, of course, the four of them up on, on the screen here. Uh, like with all Adobe Captivate projects, it's really important that you name your objects well. So in this particular instance, uh, this button is called Trudeau. This one is called Queen. Uh, this one is Mulcair. And this one is May, Elizabeth May. So they all have an appropriate name here. And what I've done is I've set up this project to also not have a play bar along the bottom. The reason being is that I want to be able to provide my users the controls that they're going to use. I don't want them to see um, the controls that are built into Captivate. So I've gone into the project drop down menu and selected skin editor and then unchecked show playback control because I don't want to give users a way to skip past this. I want to force them to answer this question in order for them to proceed. Now behind each one of these buttons is an advanced action that does two things. It's going to assign a value to a variable and there are four variables, one representing each of the possible answers. 
And the other part of the advanced action is that it's going to change the state of whichever object has been selected. So let's take a look at Elizabeth May, for example. And if we go into the Actions tab of the Properties panel, we'll see On Success, Execute Advanced Actions. And the script for that is Press May. And there's one for Press Mulcair, Press Queen, Press Trudeau. So in this case, we'll just look at the Press May Advanced Action. Incidentally, I've also checked off a hand cursor and disable click sound. These are just preferences, of course. I don't like the click sound. And of course, I want the hand cursor to let users know that this is a clickable object. So that simply changes from the normal arrow to the hand cursor. Let's take a look at that advanced action now. So you can see here the action name is Press May. This is a conditional action. And it's asking the question if the variable associated with this first answer, and I've named these very appropriately variable so that they, they're all, all my variables in the course will be grouped together towards the end. Question one, answer one. In other words, if I have more than one question of this type, I might have question two, answer one, question three, answer four, whatever it might be. But in this case here, this is the first answer of the first question in this course. So if the variable question one, answer one is equal to zero, and by default, if I show you my variables uh, window, you can see, of course, I have one for each of the four possible answers in this question, and the default for those is going to be zero when a user arrives on this page. So if the variable is equal to zero, we're going to do the following groups of uh, things here. Now this looks confusing, but really it's just two things. We're going to assign a value of one to the variable associated with Elizabeth May, so we can keep track of who has been selected as an answer. And we're going to assign a value of zero to the three remaining variables. In other words, they are not selected, Elizabeth May is selected. Finally, we're going to change the state of the image here, or the button, if you will, to selected. And we're going to change the state of all the other buttons, just in case one of those has been previously selected, back to normal. And that's it. And I've duplicated this, this advanced action with some small changes as to which one is being assigned a value of one and which one is being selected as far as the change the state of uh, action. There's no else action in this particular case here. So let's close this and I'll show you what this does. We'll just do a quick preview before we move forward here. So we'll preview the project. So here's our interaction. So we have four different advanced actions that essentially all do the same thing, but to different buttons. So if I click on Elizabeth May, it's gonna show a red outline around her to indicate that she's been selected. Behind the scenes, a variable associated with answer one is going to be assigned the value of one and all the other variables are assigned a value of zero. If I select the queen, uh, it's going to change the state of Elizabeth May back to normal and change the state of her button to selected. And again, make the changes to the variables behind the scene. So that's the first step of the process is we have the ability to show the user that they've made a selection amongst one of the four possible picture answers. So let's close this and go back to our project and see how we finish this off. So the next uh, advanced action that you need is the submit button. So this is nothing fancy here. It's a smart shape that I'm using as a button, but you could use a regular button as well. And I've also checked off the hand cursor and I've disabled the click sound. Again, those are just personal preferences. But here's the uh, on success action. This is under the actions tab of your properties panel. You'll see a script for submit. Let's take a look at what's included in that submit. But first, 
let me tell you about a couple of objects that are presently on the screen. You don't see them here. They're actually hidden. I've got a mask, and a mask is simply a shape that covers the entire screen and allows you to focus in on the object that's going to appear above it. Now this mask, if I uncheck it, uh, or if I check it to show in the timeline, you'll see it's just a gray colored, semi-transparent box, nothing fancy there. And then I have two other grouped objects, and one of them, of course, is the incorrect feedback, which is, again, a simple smart shape that's been grouped together with a button. It has a message to let the user know that they've made an improper selection. And the continue button simply will go to the next slide. So if I select just the continue button, you can see that it's also a smart shape that's being used as a button. And the action associated with that is just go to next slide. Once again, I've checked off hand cursor and disable click sound. The other object besides this one is the correct feedback. And here I've got a message that you are royally correct in reference to the queen. And uh, included in that grouping is a continue button. And because this is the correct answer, I've also checked off include and quiz. And it's going to assign a points value of one for getting this answer correct. And that's a way you can turn this into a actual quiz question from a knowledge check. If I uncheck this, it's just a knowledge check. If I check it off and include a points value, it becomes part of your final quiz. Now these objects by default, whether it's the grouped messages uh, or the mask, they're not visible in output. And that's important because of course, you want to be able to not have these appear on screen until the user has clicked the submit button. Let's go ahead and hide them from our timeline again and take a look at that submit advanced action just so you can see how that works as well. So if I click on the icon associated with uh, executing advanced actions, you can see I have a conditional action called submit. Now it's going to check the variable that's associated with the correct answer, in this case, Queen Elizabeth, she's the third answer. So if variable question one, answer three is equal to one, in other words, the user has selected the queen, then we're going to show the mask, which is that gray covering over the screen, and also show the correct feedback. Alternatively, if the user has selected anything other than answer three, we're going to show the mask, but in this case, show the incorrect feedback, which will allow the user to continue with the rest of the project, but it won't assign a score or value, and it certainly gives them the message that they chose incorrectly. So let's close that, and let's take a look at this in action from, from start to end. <laughs> Let's go and preview the entire project. So here we go. Here are my four different shapes, which we're using as buttons. The shapes, of course, are using uh, the images to fill their background with. And if I select one of them, of course, there's a visual cue or a visual indicator to let me know that I've selected uh, one of the answers. In this case here, I will choose incorrectly first so we can see what that looks like. And then we'll hit our submit button. And again, there's another advanced action that's checking uh, the answer against what we know to be correct. And it will display the appropriate message. There we go, incorrect. Click continue to proceed. So if I click the continue button, I'll simply just go to the quiz results slide and of course, it lets me know that I failed and my score is zero. If I do this a little differently, if I choose to preview this project and choose correctly, we should get a different result. So in this case here, I'll choose the queen as the correct answer. And then I'm gonna hit the submit button and it tells me that I'm royally correct click continue to proceed. So pretty much the same result as before, but of course I've got a positive message here 
And by clicking this continue button, I'm adding a value of one to my final quiz score. And of course I get the results that you would expect. I scored one, I got 100%. Congratulations, you passed. Keep in mind, of course, that the review quiz function, you'll need to come up with perhaps a message on the screen to indicate that the, the user has selected the correct answer or one of the incorrect answers. Uh, but otherwise, everything else should work as normal. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was helpful or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.